Hey, Bullfrog here. I am going to give you a quick tour of my chickens today. Uh, I'm doing some pretty interesting breeding projects. I'm trying to uh, continue to improve my chickens to make them better homestead birds. And I have some ideas about how I might be able to do that. And I want to take you along with me to show you that. This is my uh, Seminole pumpkin behind me, if you can see it there. That is all one pumpkin plant. Uh, I'm going to do a separate video about that, though, because that just uh, is another example how using the chicken dirt in your garden really is the best fertilizer I've ever used in terms of simplicity and um, you know cheapness but uh we'll do another video on that so uh, let me show you my chickens all right on my way out to uh, my main free range flock i run into some guineas here i have a flock of 12 right now i did have a flock as big as 24. i started with 10 guineas ended up losing some to my dogs and then i culled a couple that were constantly fighting and getting run off from the main group so i was down to five then a bobcat or other unknown predator caught the fifth one, so that left me with four. Then I reproduced them back up to 24, and now I'm back down to 12. Uh, do they serve a good purpose out here? I don't know yet. I don't know. The jury is still out as it relates to that. They, um, they're they very, very alert. They seem to be good browsers. They're pretty tough when they're mature adults. The difficulty is getting them getting them grown. Uh, when they're immature, they, they're a little more naive acting, it seems like, and they're easier for predators to catch. Um, they're not good at reproducing themselves, I'm finding. They're seasonal breeders. Uh, it seems like they uh, nest in the spring and the fall. Uh, they nest way out in the woods and in the blueberry fields, and that's where predators catch them. They, they nest a lot like wild turkeys. They pick little thick areas and get up in it. And uh, I don't know, like I said, jury is still out on them. I think if these 12 can't reproduce themselves without my intervention, I'm gonna just let them live their lives out and die because I think my chickens are really doing everything that they can do. So um, they still have time to uh, prove themselves though. All right, this coop here, this old, this old worn down coop is uh, just a little shelter area I use for my chickens. See the door is open. They can come and go as they please and they free range, you know, the whole place here. And about half of the flock roosts in here at night. The other flock roosts out in the trees and in other areas. Um, but uh, this is where I try to get them to lay at in here. Uh, but let's, let's look at some of these chickens running around. These are my jungle fowl hens, my hybrids. Um, cross between jungle fowl and uh, domestic chickens. Uh, remember I call these my uh, cracker game bantams because they're very close to what the Florida crackers used to raise on their homesteads. As best I can remember thinking back to what I saw when I was a child. And um, they're very wild acting. I got a lot of videos about them. But I'm running into to some issues with them. Uh, they reproduce themselves faster than predators can uh, catch them. In fact, you can see some biddies, half-grown biddies running around over there with a hen. Uh, the issue that I'm running into is um, because of their small size, they lay small eggs. So um, if they were bigger and made bigger eggs, that would be better for survival purposes. And then uh, the other issue really is that they don't have a lot of fight in them. They got some fight in them. Though they, after a thunderstorm, the roosters will um, fight each other uh, to what I take to be the death, but for uh, either my intervention or the intervention of the mature rooster. Um, but they don't, they don't have the size in them to really turn around and beat a hawk now. When, the, when a hawk is coming after them biddies, about the best they can do is run and hide. And I want some chickens that will turn around and um, beat the crud out of the hawk. So I'll show you in just a little bit what I'm going to do about that. But um, I have about, oh, probably about 60 of these running around out here. Look how pretty they, they are. And they, those are both young roosters right there. They're still young and immature. But they're very beautiful. Beautiful colors. You know, athletic build pretty tough but they only top out about two and a half to three pounds and um, I'd like to see them about five or six pounds for um, for better action against predators 
Now in here I have um, some biddies that I'm brooding and they're important to my breeding program because they come off of a different rooster than hay hay. They are actually um, off of tyrant and tyrant is a very aggressive rooster that I have that is also um, very athletic, very tough, very beautiful. He has a lot of good traits but he's human aggressive. He's too dangerous. He, he'd hurt my daughter. He'd hurt myself. Um, he's the only rooster I've ever seen that tries to disembowel an adult human. He'll actually try to spur your belly high. He'll fly up on you to do it. And uh, he's just too dangerous to be out here. Actually, I just sent him off to live with my brother's chickens on his farm where they don't have any little children running around. So, um, so um, but this is his stock. And what I've discovered is you can take an aggressive rooster and breed them. And uh, you might get some of his biddies that are aggressive, but you'll also get some that aren't. So hopefully I'll get some off of this batch that have his positive traits and not his negative traits. Here's Brunson, my bulldog. I've showed him to you before. But uh, he's free range out here with my chickens. And uh, he guards them. Uh, now, like any other dog that I've had, the guineas set him off for some reason. That's, that's another tick against the guineas. Something about the noises they make and the way they move just makes a dog want to catch them. Um, but uh, he doesn't bother the chickens, though. He's a good boy with the chickens. So let me show you one way by which free range can make your chicken stronger. See this hen has three chicks with her? Well earlier today she actually had four with her. But I noticed the fourth one was lagging behind the group really bad. It was having a hard time keeping up as she would cover long distances and she won't slow down uh, for them. She expects them to keep up. Well let me show you what happened to the other chick. Well, I know that seems sad, but that's survival of the fittest for you. That chick was too weak to keep up, so it perished, and now it's food for the other chickens. And uh, that makes for a better flock. So um, if you got the guts to do it, that's how you can improve your chicken. The next day, this is her with the same three surviving biddies, and look how good they keep up. And see, over in the garden area here, I have a separate flock of jungle fowl hybrids. They have a different dominant rooster. That is not him. This is actually a little bantam rooster I'll tell you about in a second. And I'll tell you about those in a second. So there's the jungle fowl hen. She's got some chicks with her. I don't know if you can see them, but I can hear them. over here in the gardenias that's old Ragnar now he's missing some of his tail feathers but they're growing back that's from where I caught him one night off the roost to weigh him for my breeding program and I accidentally pulled some of his tail feathers out but he's got a whole flock of hens under there quite a few of them he's a good rooster good build see we're on the edge of a blueberry field here and see my seminal pumpkins have just taken over this whole area. But in here, let me show you what I got. So I want to make my jungle fowl bigger and I want to make them fiercer. These are Asian Azil, specifically Sonatol Azil. They're basically fighting chickens from Asia. And I selected these. I'm going to cross these into a line of my jungle fowl. And the reason I picked these specifically is, A, they got a reputation of being very fierce to large predators. They can be dangerous to dogs, foxes, cats, those sorts of things, hawks. There's actually um, video out there that shows them attacking hawks and whatnot. Um, they also have a build like a wild turkey because I asked myself, okay, what is an animal, a bird, a game bird, a galliform, which is the same family chickens are in, that lives out here with no human intervention whatsoever? Well, wild turkeys do. I said, are there any chickens that look like wild turkeys? Yes, there are. It's these azeal. So I've selected them and I'm going to cross them into some of my jungle fowl here and see if that don't, um, you know, make them even that much better survivors than what they already are and they already are good survivors but um 
now these are these birds are not mature they're only about uh, 14 I think they're about 14 weeks old at the most so they got a lot of growing to do but they're already bigger than my jungle fowl and uh, pretty neat now I can't I can't free range them right now just yet because that rooster there the the cockerel or stag he fights everything that stands in his way when he's let out so um so I, I'm, I'm gonna have to work with that I do want them to free range because I want them to be able to use their wings a lot because I think wing development is very important for free range chickens but uh these are pretty neat birds and let me show you another one that I'm also going to cross into my jungle fowl. Alright, I'm probably not going to be able to get a very good picture of his physique. You see, hiding under the pumpkin is an American game fowl that's been crossed with an Oriental game fowl, probably something like my Zeals. He's only 10 weeks old. He is already a huge, huge bird, bigger than my jungle fowl. And he is a fierce guy, too. I actually call him the Indominus after the Indominus Rex from... Um, Jurassic World because he's he's got a lot of gray on him a lot of confederate gray in his colors and so he makes me think of the Indominus so that's what I call him and um, he's a part of my free range flock right now I did raise him separate but I've now integrated him in and he is fierce and I hope between them and the Azil bred to my jungle fowl I will end up um, making a superior free range chicken. Now let me show you what I got going on in this brood pen right now. You may remember in a previous video I had um, some old English game bantams. And there were some things I really liked about them and some things I didn't like about them. And they're a very common breed. Well, there is a, another breed of game bantam called the American game bantam. But those birds are actually extinct. They went extinct sometime in the uh, 1990s or early 2000s. But if you breed a bird that conforms to their show standard, then you actually can legitimately call it an American Game Bantam. And the American Game Bantam is not a miniature American Game Fowl. The American Game Bantam is actually a uh, jungle fowl hybrid is how they were originally created. And of course I have some great jungle fowl hybrids. So I said, why don't I try to make my own line of American Game Bantams? And it'll be my first time ever breeding birds to a show standard. So that's what I've got here and they're actually coming along very nice uh, that rooster right there is a pretty good specimen um, he's still he's young he's filling in he's about uh, uh he's probably about 14 to 16 weeks old i'd have to go back and look at my records to know for sure but uh these are going to be show birds by the time i'm done with them i do sell my jungle fowl eggs on ebay i don't have them listed at the moment because it's the height of the summer and a lot of the birds are molting but i'm also going to add these in a separate listing and they should have the free range toughness of the jungle fowl um but there'll be neat little bantams that can bear confinement well so if you wanted to have some in a coop you could keep them in a little coop or you can let them free range your farm whatever works but they're um, pretty little birds, tough little birds. I had to separate the two roosters because they were fighting so bad. And, and between the two, this was the one I wanted to keep for my breeding project. So um, anyhow, uh, when I'm done with these, and it might take another generation or so, but um, these should be a pretty neat little line of bantams. And um, these will be the ones I play with. These will be the ones that are more pets, while the, the free-range birds are more practical livestock. But anyhow, uh, this is kind of a tour of, of what I'm doing with my chickens right now. So um, I'll keep you updated. And I tell you, I, the, the chickens have become really my main hobby. They're, they're fun to mess with. They're fun animals. They're cheap animals to get into. And um, I highly recommend. I think every homestead needs to have them. I think every homestead needs some kind of game chicken free-ranging because they're really...
superior survival birds to what most of our domestic birds are today. So anyhow, this has been Bullfrog. Thank you for watching.